So today we're back up in the attic craft room and I want to make another unit for this room which will sit along the sloping roof at the back there. So my original plan for the furniture along the sloping roof of the craft room was to have a bookcase here which would come about like that leading from the edge of this desk and then a sort of smaller sideboard leading along here but I've actually changed my mind and I think I'm just going to have one sort of long unit which will be a sort of multi-purpose craft unit and we'll have drawers and slots and cupboards and things and then I can really go to town dressing that but I just don't like the idea of the sort of broken pieces along there because of where it's got to stand I don't think it's going to look right but I think a unit the same height as the desk leading back like that and then along is going to fit in a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've got here my sort of small rule just to sort of get um, some measurements. So we're six inches to there and then I've got another measure from that way. Is that another three? Right, I think I'm going to have to put the camera down to actually take some proper measurements. So I'm just using this unit that I've already got in here to work out how it's going to look. So I, I want it to come to here, so I'm using my rule as the sort of borderline. And that's as far back as the doll's house can go, so I'm using that unit as my measurement. So this new one will then sit along there like that but it's going to be that distance away from there and I think a gap will look silly. So what I might do, sort of similar to what I did in my craft shed, is bring the desk along there like that so it's level with the back of this desk and then build in another little section and then have an L-shaped unit. So we'll just have sort of three more little shelves down here and then go along like that and come along here so if that's sort of sitting there, I'm just trying to think how long I'll need to do it so it will actually be quite long. I think what I might do just to get the sizes exact is just do that up on a bit of graph paper from sort of bird's eye view and then I can actually lay it in there and make sure that I'm happy with the size. The height I know because it's got to be the same height as this and the depth will be obviously the same as the doll's house unit. So those I'm okay with. It's just going to be this sort of length and this little L-shaped bit coming off. Okay, so I've made a template here and that will sit there. That can come over a tiny bit. So see what I mean how that will sort of run along there like that We'll have some little drawers or shelves there and then come along here and we'll make the sort of top run on so it looks like one piece. I quite like that and I think that's going to look more streamlined than having a gap here. Okay so now I've got some surface area measurements to work from I can go and design it. So here is my design for the large craft unit and I've got here the desk out of the craft room and I'm going to be copying this design with regards to those little sort of plinths at the bottom and full side pieces as we've got there so we're doing the same sort of thing as that so that little sort of tiny shelf and that's the bit that will run off from the desk so a sort of little angle bit here and then the larger unit is the long bit along there and I'm sort of doing it so we've got the side section's the same, so we've got a couple of drawers and some shelves. And then in the centre we'll have a couple of really high shelves, same height as this little unit here, so it all sort of blends in. And then we'll be able to display some nice sort of bigger pieces in there. And then obviously we've got the tops as well. And we can create a bit of height to sort of come up to the height of the doll's house with some extra little sort of units like ink trays, that sort of thing. So we'll create some little trays on there, some magazine files and all that sort of thing to create lots of different heights and interest along the top as well. OK, so I've got my cutting list here. So I'm going to start cutting the pieces. 
So I've actually started off just by cutting the pieces needed for the small section of the unit. And when you're making a larger piece of furniture, which involves lots of separate bits, it's a good idea to section it off if you can, because then you're not going to get in a muddle with loads of bits all over your desk. So I've sanded the surface of each of the pieces and we're going to begin by making pencil marks on the back and side pieces for placement of the top, bottom and the shelf. And so we only have to do that once. I'm going to join these together, just using a little bit of masking tape at each join. So just make sure that you've got a nice flush line along your top and then put a little bit at the bottom as well. So turn that lengthways like that, I'll just move those out of the way. And we're going to begin by making a pencil mark 26 millimetres or one and one thirty second of an inch from what will become the top edge. So 26 millimetres and do that at each side of the piece of wood. And then we're going to do a pencil mark nine millimetres up from the bottom and that is three eighths of an inch. And I've sort of given that pencil mark from the bottom edge because it was one and a 61 64ths of an inch from the top and I thought that was a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> so nine millimeters or three eighths of an inch from the bottom edge and 26 millimeters or one and one thirty second of an inch from the top. Turn that back the right way and then join that line up and as you do you can just go on to the edges of the piece of wood like that and that helps when we're placing that sort of centralish shelf same along that bottom edge and do the little lines again on the front edge of that of those pieces of the side pieces and I only turn that around so that the rule wasn't sort of rocking off the bottom edge of the piece you can then remove the masking tape Okay, so we're going to begin by attaching the first side to the outer edge of the back piece. So apply glue along the long edge of your back piece. Pop that back down and press the side piece into place. Making sure you've got a nice flush line along the top edge and your pencil lines will of course join up. And I'm just going to grab a spare piece of strip and just use that to press those pieces together. And I'm sure you've seen me use this strip before and it just means that you're getting even pressure all the way along the join and you're less likely to sort of push this side piece over with your fingers. Okay, so I'm now attaching the top piece. So take one of your three identical pieces, apply glue to a long and a short edge and this is going to sit on the inside edge of those joined pieces. So get the sort of back into position first so that it's nice and flush along that top edge. And again, you can use that piece of strip to push against the top of the back piece and then push your top piece up against it. And then get your side lined up. Just press them really carefully together and that then squares the piece off. Remove any excess glue. And then we're going to attach the shelf and this is going to sit just above those pencil lines that we've done in the centre there, roughly about centre. So again, apply glue to a long and a short edge. So getting the back bit into place again first. And I say sort of just above that line, but we're just sort of hiding that pencil line with the shelf. So line it up at the back, make sure it's pressed right into that corner. I need to just come up there a tiny bit. And use that little line as well that we did on the front edge of the side piece there to help you line it up. Like that, again, get rid of any excess glue, just being careful that you don't knock it out of place. And then before we attach this bottom piece, I want to do a little pencil line on the underside, three millimetres from the front edge, and that will be when we put the plinth into place along there. And you can judge that by eye, but it's better to do a line because then you know you're getting it straight all the way along. So 
pop that piece to one side and then bring in the wall again and do that little pencil mark three millimeters one eighth of an inch from the front edge and this will be on the underside will become the underside join that up Now put this piece into place and you just want to make sure that the line is on the bottom and towards the front edge there. So apply glue to the side and back. Again, get that back bit lined up first. So it's just above that pencil line. And then push the side piece in to meet it and that squares it off. Give it a good press, again making sure you're getting it right into that corner on the left hand side there. Good firm press. Quick check for glue. Turn that onto its side and then we're going to position the plinth as I say so it's just sitting behind that little pencil line. So again apply glue to a long and a short edge of the plinth. And then stick that into place. I'm pressing it, my finger there against the shelf so I've got something to support it. Good firm press. Make sure that it's sort of sitting straight at the bottom as well so that you've got an even amount up here and up here from front to back otherwise it will look a little bit uneven. Okay, get rid of the excess glue. Then we can attach the side to apply glue to all these outer edges. And whether you're going to be making this large storage unit or, or not, this is quite a nice little piece just as a little standalone unit if you've got a sort of tiny space to fill in any room really. So you would just make a top, um, like I'm sure you've seen me do before, bevel the front and the sides and then attach it so that the flat edge is flush with the back of your unit. Might look quite nice. Then you can attach the side. Get that top bit lined up first so you've got a nice flush edge along there. I'm filming about four different videos today for YouTube and Patreon and my voice is starting to go. <laughs> so if I sound a bit croaky, that's why. Press those together and again, use those little lines that we did along that front edge to make sure that that's, they're sitting where they should or the side is sitting where it should. Give it a good press. And I'm going to grab some masking tape now and put a piece straight over that side. Hold it all together. And then we can start cutting the pieces for the larger section if you're making the larger piece as well. I just wanted to show you my little roll of painter's tape or masking tape. The blue one you find is less ad adhesive, so nice and gentle and won't pull too much wood off or paint off if you're using it over paint. But I actually ordered these by mistake, these smaller 20 meter rolls rather than the 66 meter larger rolls. But I quite like them, they're nice and compact, don't take up as much room in the drawer. So I didn't mind when these came through the door. Okay, so I'm going to put a piece right over that side. Before I put my finger in it. Pull that down nice and tightly. Like that. Lay it on its back and then I'm just going to put a couple of pieces. <laughs> I'm going to knock it over first and then I'm going to put a couple of pieces across the front. A piece across there. Again, okay, pull it nice and tight. And a piece across that bottom as well. So that piece could be put to one side to dry and you could begin cutting the pieces for the larger unit. 
So I've cut here the pieces now for the large section of the unit and I haven't cut the drawers as normal. We'll cut those once we've constructed this piece and we can then measure the openings and get exact sizes. And also what I've done here is I've just written on in pencil the names of the pieces and it's just advisable when you've got lots of sort of similar sized pieces just to jot on them in pencil, just really lightly so you're not pressing the pencil into the wood and then they can be erased before construction. Okay, so let's make a start. So before we begin construction, we've got quite a few pencil marks to make for placement of shelves and divides and everything like that. And since cutting all of these pieces, I've actually changed the design a little bit. If I just bring that back in, and I've got rid of the central shelves at the outer edges. So if you think about it, we'll have a drawer at the top and then a shelf in the centre as well. And that's going to make those spaces really narrow. So I'm just leaving them out of the outside and then we'll have that central shelf, the same height as our smaller unit section, just in that middle area. And then we've got plenty of room for display at either side as well. So that's just a slight change which won't, which won't affect you but I just thought because I've shown you this picture at the beginning you might think well where are those other shelves but I haven't included them in the cutting list so what you cut is just all the pieces that you'll need. Okay so let's start making our pencil marks. So we're going to begin with the back piece which is the largest of all of your pieces and we're going to start by making a pencil line 52 millimetres and that's two and three sixty-fourths of an inch from each edge of the wood. So 52 millimetres there and 52 from the other end. Same along the bottom there. 52 millimetres, two and three sixty-fourths of an inch. Turn the piece and join those up. And then leave it lengthways like that and we're now going to make a pencil mark 15 millimetres and that's 19 30 seconds of an inch from the top edge. So do that at each end of the wood and then we want to make the little mark again for our plinth which is 9 millimetres or 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom edge. So nine millimetres, three eighths of an inch. Turn it back again. And then because we're just having drawers on the outer um, sections, you just want to do that line in the first section there. So up to your first pencil line and then from your second pencil line to the edge. And then the line along the bottom will go all the way across. So join that up as well. So you'll now have a piece that looks like that. So we've got our two drawers, our central section, and then these open bits. And see what I mean about if we'd have had a shelf in there, it would be sort of very narrow there and there. And not really much option for display. Finally, we want to make a line across here for our central shelf. And that one is 26 millimetres or... <laughs> one and one thirty second of an inch from the top. So 26 millimetres, one and one thirty second of an inch from the top, just in that central section and join that up as well. So that's the back section all marked up. We're now going to do pencil marks on the top and bottom. And again, just to save time, I'm going to join these together. So just put a little bit of tape at each end this time. And again on these, we're going to do the pencil marks 52 millimetres, two and three sixty-fourths of an inch from each edge. So 52 millimetres, two and three sixty-fourths of an inch from each edge. And this will really help when we're lining up those internal divides making sure that we keep them level from front to back of the unit. From back to front. 
like that. And then when you join these up, take it onto the front edge of each of the pieces. So just do a little line on that narrow edge of the wood. Same there. And then you can remove the masking tape, but keep hold of it, don't throw it away yet. And now we're going to make pencil marks on our side pieces. And I've marked mine up, but if not, just check your measurements. They should be the taller of all of those um, sort of pieces that you've got left. So the central shelf, the divides are shorter still, and those outer shelves are shorter as well. So it's your taller of all of those pieces you've got if you haven't marked them up. And again, put your tape at the top and bottom there. This is for the um, drawer shelf. And we'll do that 9mm pencil mark as well from the bottom. So 15mm from the top, 19 30 seconds of an inch, and 9mm from the bottom, 3 8 of an inch. 15mm from the top, 9mm from the bottom, 19 30 seconds of an inch from the top, three-eighths of an inch from the bottom and I know I'm sort of shouting a lot of measurements at you but if you mark up your pieces first it really does help when you're placing your you know your pieces it helps you keep them straight and you know making sure that everything's symmetrical and even I'm just going to remove that piece of tape join those up as well and I think as far as measurements go, we're just about there. Let me just double check my plan. So just actually a, another couple of marks to make. So on our bottom piece, so that's one of these two long narrow pieces, we're going to do that line for the front plinth, three millimeters or one eighth of an inch from what will become the front edge of the bottom piece. So do that little line there as well, three millimeters one eighth of an inch and join that up and then when we come to fit these pieces we'll just need to double check which is the bottom piece and make sure that this line is underneath and towards the front edge so that's that piece and then I forgot about our little drawer divide so we're going to do a line now down the centre of these two outer drawers so do it at the top of that first section so that'll be 20 six millimeters i'm sure you can divide 52 by two but <laughs> 26 millimeters or one thirty second one and one thirty second of an inch the same that side and we won't continue those marks onto the other pieces but when we come to fit them we'll just bring our ruler in and make sure that we're placing them in the right place as regards to sort of sticking them along the top as well Okay, now we can begin construction. Just thinking about it, I think I will do a mark on the top piece for the placement of that draw divide. It just makes it easier. So I just really can't wait to start construction, but we really should do the pencil mark. So the bottom piece is the one we've got a long line along the bottom there. So take your other piece and again, do that 26 millimeter pencil mark from each end of the wood or in the centre centre of that end section. Like that at the top and bottom. Like that. And then join those up and as you join them again go on to those outer edges of the piece of wood. And now we really can begin construction. So I'm going to start by sanding my wording from the side pieces. And we're going to begin by attaching a side piece to the outer edge of our back piece. So apply glue along the side of your back piece. Like that. 
your side, making sure you've got a nice flush line along the top and that the pencil lines join up. I'll just grab my piece of strip wood again. I really should have that ready before I start. <laughs> I never remember till I get there. Press those together. Remove the glue from the inside. And then we're going to attach the top and this is the piece that we've got those extra lines on and that's going to sit on the inside edge of the join pieces right at the top of the back piece so that we've got a nice flat top and again your pencil lines should all join up. Apply glue to a long and a short edge. Set that into place, getting the sort of back of the or top of the back piece lined up first and then push it against the side so again you've got that nice flush edge along there I need to go into that corner more so I've got a little bit of gap in there make sure you will push right into the corner up to the top and then I'm just going to turn that around and make sure that that's right along that top edge and I'm going to grab a longer piece of strip wood for this and you can use that to help you sort of make sure that that is pressed right along the top. I think we did that on the smaller one didn't we? Just to make sure that you've got that nice flush top. Turn that back around. I'm just making sure that it's all staying where it should. And now lay it on the top and we can attach our draw divides. And these are going to sit centrally over those pencil lines that we made. So you'll be able to see the pencil line on the top of that front shelf and a little bit of pencil line on the back there. And you want that to be right in the center of the thickness of your piece of wood. So apply glue to a long and short edge of the divide. My glue's starting to dry up a bit. I'll use what I can and then I'll get a bit more. And pop that one into place. Use that line on the front to line it up. Give it a press into place. And then the same at the other side. And again centrally over that line. And you'll see in the cutting list that I've advised cutting these so that the grain is down that shorter edge. And as I'm sure you know by now, it's just that that edge of the wood is neater. So if you're having that edge facing forwards, then always cut it so that your grain is in that direction. And then have a look from the front to make sure you're happy that they are actually sitting straight down. If you can't judge by eye, then sort of bring in your rule and you can measure across the top and across the bottom there. Make sure you've got the same distance. But I'm happy that they look nice and straight. We're now going to attach the first of the outer shelves and that will sit in that first section and underneath the divide. So begin by applying glue to the bottom of that divide. And then along a short and long edge of your first outer shelf. And again I've erased the, the word in. Press that into place. It should be sitting just above that pencil line. So use your lines and the ones that we did on the side as well. Make sure that it's sitting nice and straight. Press it against the bottom of the divide. Okay, make sure it's right in that corner and then remove your excess glue. So we're now going to be attaching the first of the internal divides and that's going to sit on the outer edge of that line. So we begin by applying glue along the edge of that first shelf section. and then a long and short edge 
of your divide. Put that into place. Using those pencil lines as your guide. So it should be sitting to the sort of right hand edge of those. Push it right up against the top. Remove any excess glue. And we're now going to place the central shelf. And we're going to position this so it's sitting above the pencil line and then we'll bring in our rule and just make sure that it's the same distance from the top of the unit to the bottom of the shelf, just so that we've got it level sort of across as well, or from top to bottom. So apply glue to a short and a long edge. Just roughly press it into place like that, and then bring in your small rule and just measure from the bottom of that piece to the top of the unit and that should be your 26 millimeters actually needs to go there like that and press it against your left hand shelf and we'll just have a quick measure this side and that needs to go down a bit a bit as well but when we bring in that final divide we can level that up and actually glue it into place and glue it against the other divide to hold it in place so begin again by applying glue along this edge of this piece of the shelf and then the top and back of the divide or a short and long edge again Press that into place, again okay, using your line on that little, um, the little line on the top that we did there. And keeping it on the outer edge of that central line there, or inner line I should say. And then again bring in your rule and we just want to make sure that that central shelf is sitting level all the way along. I need to come down this end so that's level now so I want to now press it into place we're now ready to attach the final outer shelf and again that will sit under there like that so begin by applying glue to the bottom of the draw divide and then to a long and short edge of the outer shelf into place using your lines again make sure it's sitting where it should press it along the bottom of the divide get rid of that glue I just want to look from the front again and make sure that that's sitting straight all the way along and again bring your wall in if you're not very good at measuring by eye I think that looks quite good and now we can attach our bottom piece and remember that you want that three millimeter line one eighth of an inch line that we did to be at the bottom there and that's where we'll sit the plinth so again you want to apply glue to the bottom of those central divides and then so that that line is underneath to a short and long edge of the bottom piece sit that into place using your pencil lines to make sure it's sitting straight all the way along you've also got those little lines on the front to make sure that the divides stay where they should carefully remove your excess glue I'm now going to attach the plinth which will sit on the inside edge there We'll use our line as a guide. So apply glue to a short and a very, very long edge. <laughs> and then sit that into place. Following that line. And I'm just judging by eye that I'm sort of three millimetres back along that side piece as well to come up that end 
probably when you're attaching a longer piece, you move one bit and all of it comes away. And then we're ready to attach the remaining side piece. So apply glue to all of the outer edges. Lay that back down and then bring in your side piece. Attach it so that you've got nice flush edges at the top and bottom. And use your lines as well on the inside just to make sure everything's staying where it should. Again, it's difficult to sort of give it a good press <laughs> when you're working on a larger piece because you can't get one hand from one end to the other. Press that down like that. Remove any excess glue and then I'm going to grab some masking tape and we'll get lots of tape on here to make sure that it's really securely held whilst the glue dries. So I'm going to stand that up on its end like that and I just want to start by putting one piece right across that side and then we'll put some really long pieces across the front. So pull that nice and tight, make sure you're not knocking anything out of place. Notice that part of my plinth is just overhanging a little bit at the front there, or at the bottom corner. But that's okay, because if you have that, then once this is all completely dry, you can just sand that flat against your sandpaper and get that nice flush bottom edge. So I probably just cut that a little bit deeper on one end, or it's not pushed up as much one end or something like that. But a good sand will sort all of that out, so don't worry too much. A bit of glue in there as well. And then I'm going to put a couple of pieces across the front. A couple of nice long pieces there. And pull it really tightly. And hold it all together. And another piece right across the bottom there. Like that and that piece can be left to dry as well. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry remove the masking tape and then I've sanded mine on all edges including the front so I held it flat against the sandpaper like that and went round in circular motions and that will ensure you've got a nice flat front edge but I also did the bottom because if you remember I had a little bit overhanging at this end and that straightened all that out as well. So once you've got to this stage, measure your drawer openings and then cut the drawer pieces accordingly. Now, as always, I've given the sizes for the drawer pieces in the cutting list, but that's just to be used as a guide. And then you would measure the opening and adjust them accordingly so that you've got probably about a quarter of a millimetre at each edge. So width, height and depth allow a quarter of a millimetre, which will allow the drawer to open and close more smoothly. And then when you come to construct the drawer, begin by applying glue along each edge of the base piece. I'm sure you're all familiar with this process by now. And drawers can be not tricky, but just sort of quite time consuming. And especially if you don't get the measurements exactly right, then it involves a lot of sanding and fitting again to get them to actually fit into the opening. So it is a bit of a skill actually making drawers. And I'm not perfect at it after more than 20 years of making doll's house furniture. <laughs> but I did actually put a, a question out on Facebook the other day, you might have seen it, asking if you preferred um, working drawers and doors in your doll's house furniture or whether it was okay to have false ones. And I think the sort of main view was that working doors and drawers um, are better for a doll's house. 
and you can have them open and, and use them in your displays and things like that. And I, I really do feel the same. I, I don't like things when doors and drawers don't open. But it is the easier option, so if that's how you want to do it, then that's absolutely fine. A lot less time consuming as well. So just work your way along, fit in your sides. I'm using my strips again, as you can see, just to press those into place. And then once they've dried off a bit, we'll come back and fit the front and back pieces. And the camera battery is flashing now, so that's good timing. And then by the time you get to the end of the line, your first one should be dry enough to handle without it falling apart. So apply glue now to the front and back edges. Pop that back down and then attach the front and back pieces. And you may need to pull the sides out to meet the edges of the piece, just to sort of square it all off and make it into a nice box shape. Pick it up and press it into shape. That can then be put to one side to dry and you can move on to the next one. So they can now be left to dry. So whilst the drawers are drying, I want to have a look at the top piece. Now, you've got two ways of doing the top to make it into sort of one unit. So you can either cut one full piece, as I've done here, and then we'll cut out a section along the top of the smaller unit there and then come along here. So we're creating that L shape, similar to the template that I made earlier. Or, if I take that off of there, you can cut one piece that will run along the top of your smaller unit and then have a sort of overhanging bit here, which is the thickness of your longer unit. So that will go right to the back there and fill this hole. So that'll go like that. And then you can just do a normal top piece along here, which will then butt up against that overhang along there. I hope I'm explaining that okay. So if you want to do it in two pieces and then you would sort of glue glue them together when you put them into place or even just push them up against each other. In fact what I'll do is I'll put both lots of measurements in the cutting list so you would just sort of cut a piece to go along there which would butt up to this front edge so you don't need to bother about an overhang along the front and then come as wide as your unit there. But like I say, I will put both lots of measurements in, but I'm actually going to do it as one piece and then cut out this section. So to get the size of that piece, I've just basically put this longer unit in front of the shorter unit because I'd rather the longer one overlap the smaller unit because it's got drawers that need to come out. So if we do it so that the shorter one overlaps, then you're in danger of sort of getting those drawers stuck in there. So I'm doing mine like that. So that will sit along there. And it's not sitting exactly straight. That's because of the cutting mat, because I have actually tried it on my flat work surface and it does um, sit straight nicely along there. And then I've measured the whole width, so from the back of the small unit to the edge of the long one, and then again the depth from here to the back of the longer unit. And that's how I got the measurements for this. But what I want to do now is turn it all upside down and then draw the section that I need to cut out. And I think that's going to be an easier way of actually doing it. Let's put that there like that. So, <laughs> I have to think where it will go now. That will be there. I've got a little bit of an overhang at this end, about a millimetre. I'm making sure it's nice and flush along that back edge. So obviously we want a straight back along there. And then that will go on there. That needs to be flush there as well. And did I have... I think I, I left it so I could have an overhang at this side of this. along the back there and that will sit there 
Yeah, and then I've got a little bit of an overhang here at the side of this unit, which I've got room for actually in the craft room. So that's sitting nicely along that edge there. So then what I'm going to do, and I'm sorry if my hand's in the way, but I don't want to move it because I've just got all that lined up. So I'm going to make a mark there and there and then pop that straight again. So I'll have one there as well. So I can draw those measurements on and then cut this front section out. So join those ones up and then measure where you did that little mark at the front of the cabinet. So that was 38, which is the depth obviously of our smaller unit. Do that pencil mark at the back as well. Join those up as well. So we're creating a cross section there. And then it's this area that we want to remove. So we've basically got a little square for our smaller unit with a bit of an overhang if you want one. You don't have to have the overhang. And then this is our larger unit here. And then this square covers the gap. So I'm now going to cut this section out. Okay, so when you're cutting a section from a piece of wood, you always want to cut against the grain of the wood first. So our grain runs along this long edge. So I want to cut that way first. When you're cutting something like this, so you've got a little corner join, it's always a good idea just to go into that corner first with the very tip of your craft knife. So just do a little score like that. Be careful of your fingers would be aware of where they are in relation to the blades. So I'm just going in a little bit like that and then come along that way as well. And what I'm sort of doing there is creating a little um, sort of gutter really or a stop area for the blade of the knife so that I don't go past those areas when I'm cutting. And then I'm just going to use my knife as normal. So I want to do it that way so that I can come along this way with the knife. So get it lined up and then come from your little cut to the edge of the wood. Start just with a gentle cut or a light score and then you can go in a bit deeper. And if you feel comfortable then just get rid of the rule once you've made those first couple of scores. But again, like I say, just be super careful of your fingers. Make sure they're never behind the blade. So that's the tough bit and then getting rid of the bit that's along the um, line of the grain is always easier. So again, line your rule up as normal. Hold on to it nice and tightly. Just check I'm on camera. <laughs> and then start with a light score. Probably best not to let go of your ruler on this one because it's a longer cut. And then just keep going to yaw through like that. Okay, so I'm now going to bring in a piece of 180 grade and just sand away my pencil lines. And then I want to keep the side and back edge straight, but along these sort of exposed edges, I just want to very gently round them over. So I don't really want to take away from the um, depth or length of the piece of wood, but I just want to get rid of that sharp edge. So I'm just going to do it on the side here. And I'm supporting the piece with my hand as I'm doing it so that this piece doesn't break off. And then I want to do it along the front edge there. Again, you don't want to take off of the actual length of the wood. And then along that front edge. Tidy that up. And finally along that end. Like that. And this is now ready to glue into place. So begin by applying glue to the top of your long unit. I'm going to apply the glue directly to it. And then use a spreader to spread that out. Making sure you get it right along 
the edges of the wood. I knew I'd have too much there. <laughs> Let me get rid of some of this. I'll just get a little piece of card to put that onto. So I'm going to get this long, long piece lined up first. And I know I've only got a tiny little overhang at this end. And that's where I'm going to start. And I want to make sure that I've got that nice flush edge along the back. So I'm coming over like that. And then just use your finger to make sure that it's really flush along that back edge. Like that. We're then going to get the smaller one in place before that's completely dry. So that if we need to do any manoeuvring, we still can. So apply glue to the top of your smaller unit as well. And also along that little front edge. And that's the bit that's going to stick alongside the longer unit. I'm just on that little side bit like that. And this is a technique that I use in kitchens as well to get all of the units really fitting together nicely. So that will glue alongside that unit first and I'm following the line because remember I said it wasn't exactly flat on my um, cutting mat. So I'm making sure I've got a nice flush line in there and then check that you've got the flush line <laughs> along the back of that side piece and then you know you're all square. I've got that nice little overhanging lip there. I'm just actually going to lay it down because there's no point getting it lined up with my cutting mat because I know that doesn't work. Just let me do it that way. And I've got that nice flush edge along the back there. I'm just using my thumb there on the inside of those shelves just to make sure that it's nice and flush where I'm joining it to the other unit. That's right now, so I don't want to move it anymore. That's exactly the right position now. Really pleased with how that's looking. So what I want to do now is put some tape over and some clamps to really hold that all together. So let me grab some tape. I'm going to put one long piece right across the larger section find the end of the tape. Straight over the middle like that. Remember at that other end you haven't got anything to glue it onto or stick it onto so just do that like that and push it onto the inside of the unit there. Just knock that out of place. Let me get that lined up again. And then I'll quickly put a piece over there before it goes again. Just check that back edge again before I stick that down. I think what I'm also going to do is put a piece going inside like that. Just to hold that in place as well. Because I really like that nice flush line along there. I'm just going to trim the tape down a little bit. Just feed that in there, make sure I've got that flush line and push it down. Now I feel safe because I know everything's secured into place. Now I just want to put some clamps along these front edges, along the sort of longer edge because I'm not going to be able to get them in there at the same time. But I think that piece is held quite nicely so I'm happy with that. center there. Fit in as many as you can and you know it's going to be held nice and securely. Okay and that piece can be left to dry. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry remove the tape from your unit and then I've just given the top part a really gentle sand just to get rid of any pulls that the masking tape 
had left and this is now ready for paint. And then you also want to sand the drawers and you'll find that they will need sanding as they'll probably be a bit too tight. But the best thing to do is just do a little bit of sanding, try it again and if it's still too tight, sand just a little bit more. What you don't want to do is sand too vigorously and then find that you've got lots of gap in around the edges. So now I want to drill some holes and attach a wooden draw knob centrally to each drawer. So I'm going to be using these little 2.5 millimeter, 3 32nd of an inch little wooden turned knobs. And you want to begin by making a pencil mark in the center of your drawer front. And then the drill bit you'll need will need to be as thick as that little stem bit at the back. Now that's usually about two millimetres and my largest sort of mini drill bit is 1.6. So what I do is I drill the hole and then I use a cocktail stick just to make it a little bit wider so that the stem will fit in. I also sort of jiggle the drill around a little bit first. Try the draw knob first. You don't want to make the hole bigger if you don't need to. I think I do just make, need to make that a tiny little bit bigger. So just pop the cocktail stick in and again just sort of jiggle it around. <laughs> it's soft wood so you're just um, making it a tiny little bit bigger and then you can try the drawn up again and there that's a perfect fit. I always just like to pop a little bit of glue in as well just to make sure they're really secure in there. And then glue that into place. There'll be a little bit overhanging actually inside the drawer. You can either just leave that because it's not going to be seen or you can sand that away if you were going to be sort of having the drawers open and using them for display or anything like that. So that's that one. I also um, write in my drawers when you're sort of making lots of drawers of a similar size it's a good idea just to write in them so i've sort of just gone along the unit one two three four so i know where they actually go back so this is now ready for paint and i'm going to be using my north pole emulsion paint which i've used for the other pieces of furniture in the craft room so I've applied the first coat of paint to these pieces. Once that's completely dry, I'll give it a gentle sand back and then apply the second coat. And there is the completed unit. And I'm really pleased with this piece. I hope this is something that you'll be able to make for your craft room as well. I know it's a rather large piece, but if you have got a similar sort of attic room to mine and you're creating a craft room, then this is really ideal to sit beneath the sort of sloping roof and then you can add height with the pieces that you display on top. And I'm really looking forward to doing that. So I've just got one more piece of furniture to make for the craft room and that's going to be the desk chair. And then we can make a start on all of those accessories. OK, so now I want to go and try this in place in the craft room. And there it is in place. And I'm really pleased with how that looks in there. I like how it all runs along. So as I say, just the chair to make now and then we can start on the accessories. And that's where we're really going to add all of the detail into this room. And we can create some really nice pieces to put in here. I also want to make a rug as it's quite a sort of long room so we've got a lot of sort of bare floor there that I'd like to cover. So I'll have a think about that as well. I'm working on another couple of videos at the moment as well. I'm dressing the bed for the main bedroom and I'm also making a few changes to the study. So look out for the, those episodes which will be coming soon. And until then, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye!